this will just. <clears throat> okay, right, we're recording. Okay, good afternoon. This is the Finance Committee of the Town Council of Amherst. I call the meeting to order. We do have a, a quorum uh, present. Um, we are doing this meeting remotely. Um, so uh, we will make, um, make sure that everyone has the opportunity to participate. If you have trouble uh, with uh, getting um, access to the, to the uh, meeting, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll try to resolve it. Um, so to start with, uh, we're going to uh, go, go around the um, meeting attendees and make sure everyone can hear me and I can hear them, we can hear them. So uh, Bernie. I'm here. Hey Andy. Present. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Present. Kathy. Yes, here. Uh, here's Alicia joining us. Hi Alicia, uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you, Bob. Great. Thank you. Okay. So we have uh, everyone here that's going to join us. Uh, the first uh, item, we have a pretty packed agenda, so I want to jump in. The first um, agenda item is public comment. So um, everyone is welcome. Uh, welcome attendees, welcome to provide public comment. If you wish to provide a comment, just raise your hand and uh, we will bring you into the meeting for your comment. I don't see any hands, so I will close up. Oh, here's one. Athena, can you please, please bring in call in user one? Hi, you're, you're muted. Can you please identify yourself and say where you live? Counselors, I am a victim of domestic violence. And so my confidentiality is protected by law for safety. Okay. okay. And I have a permanent order of protection, but I am more than a victim. I'm a resident in need of services. Um, on the top of page 251, of the town manager's proposed budget, the CDBG grants are noted and the receipt of these funds requires adherence to federal laws, yet I have been denied food by the executive director of the Amherst Survival Center. I believe her legal name is Kate Ben Ezra. Repeatedly harassed and discriminated against by her. Uh, you're all in receipt by now of a copy of the Human Rights Commission report into her misconduct, which was released in March. Um, I think it's important that you note know that after it was released, she complained to the town manager questioning Pamela Nolan Young's purview. She then made public comments on the April 22nd Human Rights Commission meeting requesting that the identities and residences of complainants be made public. She did this six times on that recording. And this is how victims get killed. It is the town manager's responsibility to monitor CDBG subgrantee activity and apply corrective action regarding performance failures. The Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities reserves the right, and I just, I think it's really important right now that every counselor know this, to suspend payments to the town under any contract when any noncompliance, fraud, abuse, or poor performance, or mismanagement is made by any subgrantee. I think monitoring the subgrantee performance is really important. Unfortunately, the senior planner, Nate Malloy, does not have in place a plan as mandated by federal law. 
So the town becomes complicit in this misconduct when it does not effectively monitor subgrantees and bring them back into compliance. Paul Bachelman was notified on November 6th of 2023, and Nate Malloy was notified on January 29th of Kate Ben Ezra's misconduct. Since being made aware of this, other members of the CDBG committee, such as Attorney Bascom, has resigned from the committee. On page nine of the May 6th town manager's report, he writes, in quotes, the town council is now reviewing the social service funding component of the grant. So he has placed everything legally into your lap, which is why these matters need to be considered by you either today or before you make any recommendations to the large body. You are accountable to the public and the town is authorized to take actions against subgrantees. The federal requirements that are triggered in the 2022 and 2023 contract year agreement are serious. She has, Kate Ben Ezra has attempted to curtail the speech of a victim of domestic violence. On October 10th of 2023, she attempted to seize the contents of the victim's cell phone, which is referred to as compelled encryption. It is illegal. She did not have a warrant. It was done at a gospel choir performance. On the 18th of August, 2023, her staff failed to protect a victim in violation of a protective order that is currently in place when a volunteer who was openly disparaging the Catholic Church was shooting pictures of the victim's license plate and threatening to engage in technology-facilitated abuse. This rises to the level of a crime. That particular type of harassment is extremely dangerous. And instead of calling for assistance from the police, when the volunteer's words rose to threats, she retaliated against the victim. On the 19th of October in 2023, the victim was trying to safely park and in an, another, yet another, mid-level violent provocation, Kate called the police on the victim attempting to trespass the victim. No crime was committed. Nothing rose to the level of a need for a police response. The victim is not a criminal. The victim does not have a criminal record. And yet, Someone who is asking you for thousands and thousands of dollars right now in federal funds weaponized the Amherst Police Department to frighten, intimidate, and harass her. Thank God the Amherst Police Department did not and had the sanity and clarity to protect her and realize what was going on. But it gets a lot worse. On November 27th of 2023, two weeks after the victim had met with the board of directors regarding the misconduct of Kate Ben Ezra, she removed the victim mid-shop from the federally funded food pantry, denying her access to food in yet another instance of intimidation, harassment, and retaliation. On December 23rd, the victim received an email from the board president of the Amherst Survival Center containing the personally identifiable information of yet a separate complainant who has also reported egregious misconduct by Kate Ben Ezra. The board president, who was an employee of the town at the time, then instructed the victim to destroy the evidence. So now you have a criminal. It is so bad, I don't need, okay. Since multiple other individuals have come forward with complaints against Kate Ben Ezra, it is the responsibility of the town to ensure that victims are protected with respect to their physical safety and otherwise from discrimination and harassment. 
denying a victim of violence at 114% of the federal poverty level access to the food pantry is in violation of federal regulations. It's in violation of the terms of the current community development block grant. It is in violation of the restraining order that is in place to protect a victim, which has the address of the survival center on it. So now before you is a decision. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of bodies right now involved in this investigation external to the municipality. You are going to make a decision about whether or not to recommend to the full body $62,398 to the survival center with its current leadership in place. You are complicit in this intentional repeated harassment and infliction of duress and distress and discrimination if you do so, right? Thank you for letting me speak. This has been really difficult. There's a lot of problems happening right now. God, I hope you can help solve them. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else want to provide public comment? Okay, I think I'll, in that case, I will close the public comment period and we'll move on to reviewing the, um, the budget. I'm uh, sorry, Bob, a, a hand went up at the last second. Oh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you yeah. want to take one more comment. <clears throat> sure. Hello, um, I'm Amartya Rutter. Um, I am a senior at Amherst Regional High School and I am from Sunrise Amherst. Um, and we are, while we're really glad that the 6% um, for the schools has been appropriated. Um, we are very concerned about using the ARPA money to fund this as it is uh, another band-aid solution. And we understand that we're in a big crunch and that we don't have a lot of options, but doing this is really only putting it off for another year. Uh, and it's something that I've heard a lot of people say, like a lot of counselors, a lot of finance committee people, like we don't want to just like, fix this for one more year and put off all this harm until next year. Um, and then that's exactly what the manager proposed, um, essentially, is like this money is going to run out. Um, and so I would encourage you all to look into other options, like maybe cutting from other departments. We, It is our belief as an organization that the police is still very overfunded um, and that that is a place where money could be cut. Um, and we also believe that the library could, could take some money out of the capital budget um, and reallocate it to the operating budget because this is a issue that I've seen my entire high school career every year. Um, and it's time for some sort of bigger systemic change to our budget. Otherwise, it's just going to keep happening. Uh, so I just I want you guys to think creatively and think big in this budget cycle because I think it's a big turning point. Uh, and yeah, that's all I'll say. Thanks for listening. Okay, thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else who wishes to provide a public comment? Okay, I don't see anyone, so I will close the, the public comment period and we'll move on to review of the budget. Um, I think um, it's probably... Um, beyond the ability of our time to go through the final report sort of page by page. But uh, does anyone have any specific comments on <laughs> the, the report itself? And um, I mean, obviously there's certain areas like the, the motions that are still a little bit squishy, but um, the rest of it should be fairly straightforward. So does anyone have any specific comments that they wish to make on the report itself? Bob, we, we um, I emailed, uh, mentioned this before the meeting started, but I emailed the committee and counselors with a, uh, an update that the, count, the town manager has proposed um, the, a revised regional school budget. Would it be okay if um, the town manager can speak to that before you get into the report? Sure. 
Thanks. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you. So um, as we discussed in, in accordance with the vote of the Finance Committee, we have submitted um, a revised budget that includes the 2% additional funds for the regional school district um, with a funding source for the additional funds coming from ARPA funds. And we have prepared motions for the council to consider or orders for the council to consider that includes um, all the actions that the council should, we were hoping that the Finance Committee would recommend to the full council. Okay, uh, do, you, do you have a specific uh, ARPA project in mind or is this sort of? No, so, you know, so all these, all the ARPA projects um, need to be, uh, the, the funds that under ARPA that are not contracted by the end of December 31 will be reallocated into free cash. Um, so we will contract as much as we possibly can um, but we don't anticipate that all the projects that we've identified back in whenever we presented that will really come to fruition. So then it will be available to the council to appropriate as you see fit or to approve appropriation as you see fit. Okay. Athena, did you want to add something? Just one other quick comment. Um, I mentioned to committee members before the meeting began that there's also a document in your packet with some legal advice about um, adopting the revised regional school budget, the long and short of it is that um, the finance committee can make a recommendation on that revised budget and the council can vote it. Um, so the process doesn't restart at the beginning with the council required to make a referral and a new public hearing and so forth. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Um, Paul, I, I actually just, I have a question on I mean, I think the the route you took for ARPA, um, you could have gone for to free cash. So I just have a quick question on why ARPA. And then I also heard you say for the first time, and I, I I'm glad you said it publicly, that if we we can put the ARPA money into free cash, because the last presentation we had is it was all going to go to roads, um, so that there'll be still some opportunity. So my my only question about the choice of ARPA is a um is among the um when we were originally told on what ARPA could be used from, we could use it in an operating budget if there had been lost revenue in some way. It wasn't clear to me we could just use it in an operating budget. And clearly ESSER has been different because the schools have been using it that way. So I just wanted to make sure there are no strings on ARPA that says this doesn't quite fit ARPA. Um, and um, because there's a large large pot of unused ARPA not designating a specific source sits fine with me. It To me, it would be cleaner to say free cash if we think the money's going to go into ARPA. So I'm just looking for your reasoning. Mm -hmm. Sure. So that your financial, your guidelines tell me not to use free cash under the financial guidelines established by the town council. You say do not use free cash as a funding source. So in trying to achieve the goal that the finance committee voted and to meet the, you know, uh, requ request of the regional school district, ARPA seemed to be the only avenue available to us without cutting other budgets. And I think Sandy can speak to whether it can be used if you want to, Sandy. Um, you know, I think we're pretty clear that this, these funds can be allocated these way, this way. Okay. Mr. Chair, if you'd like me to speak, I'd be glad to. Go ahead. Oh, well, the light keeps changing here. So <laughs> I'm really gonna try to illuminate this question. <laughs> um, so under ARPA regulations, every city or town can declare up to $10 million worth of revenue replacement. You don't have to specify what revenue was lost, but they will just assume that everybody had $10 million worth of lost revenue because of COVID. And so you can use up to that amount as revenue replacement, which is what um, designating ARPA now would do. Um, I would also just say that the final ARPA spending numbers will change. The final revenue numbers for the town are going to change eventually. Um, so it may be that uh, you don't have to rely on this amount of ARPA eventually. Um, but at this point, in, in on June 4th at 2.23, uh, 
this is a snapshot that we have. Uh, and um, before we set the tax rate in the fall, some things may need to be adjusted, but that's the best guess we have as of today. So I hope that answers the question. It does. And, you know, I'll let Mandy speak, but Paul, um, whatever day it was, I guess it was Friday, we've been told free cash was an option. So what you're saying is it goes against our guidelines. Um, so to the extent to, we will rewrite that section of, of there's a section on the regional schools. So I'll, right. we can just so, add one. Yeah, just to respond. So your question to me, Kathy, was why did you choose ARPA? Yeah, and, and I, I, I understand. Did, I didn't say I didn't, I did uh, our, uh, free cash is certainly an option. That's not yeah. the option I'm putting on the table. Okay. And if I could just add two cents to that, I think as a general matter, you don't want to use free cash. Um, again, it's within the guidelines. It also, I think, would set a bad precedent for budget deliberations going forward. If every time there was some push on something, uh, the first thing you did was go to free cash. Um, I mean, it sets a bad example for any number of, of, of whether it's school budgets or collective bargaining issues and so forth and so on. So um, Amherst has had a policy of not using free cash. And um, so I think it's a wise thing to be consistent with that policy. Yeah, thank you. That's helpful because we can also we can put a sentence or two in the section on whatever X page it's on. Thank you. Council Haneke. Thank you. Um, so we had given you two options and you chose ARPA and and I think that's given what I'm hearing, even our motion to increase the regional school budget is in violation of our own financial guidelines in a sense. Um, and so your, your choice in those options is to minimize the violations of the financial guidelines, essentially, um, to just the increase, not how you're paying for the increase, too. So you're trying not to pile on those sort of overriding our standards towns guidelines. So so I appreciate that. Um, my question with the ARPA funds is, I think a week ago, you had indicated that it might be coming from um, reducing the, the additional solar that might go to the Fort River project. So I'd like you to speak to a little bit more in your thinking on um, how the ARPA funds might get used in terms of projects, will projects that you foresee happening or that had been told to us be decreased in scope or do you foresee enough of those projects not using all of the money despite the scope that you've gone or not being able to use it because you couldn't contract that scope, say, by December. I know we had concerns about the Bang Center on that sort of ability to contract that scope, such that whatever th this 355 isn't going to, is, is it, I guess, your position at this point that you believe that using ARPA funds in this manner will be able to be done in a way that doesn't necessarily um, compromise any of the projects that you had previously indicated you were going to use ARPA funds for. Clearly you can't, as Athena has said, you can't spend them the same dollar twice, right? So this money being spent on this can't be spent on something else. Um, at this point, you know, with the, the variability in the, th the projects that we've identified, um, there's going to be change. We don't know what the numbers are for the banks community center. We don't uh, the million dollars is a is a number for the um, for the for the solar. We don't have an estimate a true estimate on the solar. It could be more. It could be less. We don't know. Depends on the scale that we do. So I, what I'm saying is that, as Sandy said, as of today we we're prioritizing funding for the school the regional school district with ARPA funds over the other projects but I'm not going to say how you know at this point how we're going to be allocating the rest of those funds other than that we've identified the major categories of how we want to allocate the funds meaning the senior center the banks community center the um, solar at the Fort River School and roads Uh, Andy? Okay, got it finally. Um, I guess uh, I'm in a 
go back to the history of the development of our financial policies for a moment and some of what we did with um, creating a policy that we wouldn't recommend using reserves of any kind for ongoing programs and what um, because there was an exception that was built in and um, we didn't put it into writing in the policy because we felt it was so rare um, and I can only recall it being used once but we always felt that um, decision makers at that point it was uh, what the finance committee would recommend the town meeting and what town meeting would do um, now it's a little bit different but the one exception that existed was that if it was a one-time use and it was clearly not going to recur in another year and it was a bridge to something else that um, and there were two ways that we saw a bridge to something else happening and i could go digging back for the original memo that um where, where this was stated but Essentially, what it was, was is that if we saw that um, a grant was coming and that um, a, an amount of money would be needed to help start up the grant program uh, because of whatever reasons, just to get it started, but that it was not going to require ongoing appropriations to continue the program, or there was other kinds of funding that was coming in, um, would that that we would consider it and the other is if we thought that it was going to invest in something that um, was going to in the end lead to long-term savings so that there was a benefit in that way and that was actually the only time i recall it being used that we actually allowed for um, reserves to be used for closeout expenses to shut down the Marks Meadows School because we concluded with the school committee at the time that uh, there would be long-term savings that would occur year for year by having one fewer elementary schools and that the costs to close down the school and transfer operations to Wildwood, which was absorbing um, the uh, Marks Meadows School into it um, was a worthwhile expenditure. So that was the one expense. So um, I throw this out for a couple of reasons. One is to sort of reinforce the point that um, guidelines are guidelines, but they can always be modified if there's a reason to do so. And that uh, depending upon what agreements are reached with the school, um, other towns and schools as far as long-term planning, that this could be, um, can, if it was going to be a bridge, it would have to be a bridge to reduction. Uh, and that reduction would have to be measured in percent of future increases. But I wanted to at least put that history out there and say that there is a little bit of precedent and uh, we'll offer what it is. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Bernie? Yeah, uh, two questions. One, um, the money that's going to be added, the 2% that's going to be added to the school budget represents what percentage of available ARPA funds? And by available, I mean funds that haven't been contracted for. I, I don't know the number off my top of my head. Okay, so, but, but is it I mean, is it a significant percentage? No, it's not percent. 10%? Percent, really, no. 5%? I just don't know the number. Okay. It's not It's uh, not significant, though, compared to it's. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so so we're, you know, in other words, it's it's highly likely that when we go and, uh, or actually when <laughs> Paul, you go and, and have firm versions of the plans and the, the bidding is done, we're, or get, we get actual, a, accurate estimates, we're going to have some tailings in that ARPA. Mm -hmm. um, and the other question I have is, is this ARPA, unspent ARPA money, um, 
goes to free cash, that'll be available in FY26, correct? Yes. Okay, so it's this this uh, this come upcoming uh, fiscal year, it, it it won't be treated as free cash. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, uh, Councilor Walker. Um, thank you, Bob. So what I think I'm understanding is that we have the option to commit to using ARPA funds, but not knowing exactly which pool if you will, of ARPA funds it will come from. Um, and I think considering the fact that we have so much left that that would be an, I would be okay with that option, but I would like some assurance that it wouldn't affect the amount that we have available to put towards solar for the high school. Um, because I know we don't have full estimates, but like you said, Paul, like what if it comes above what we were already planning to appropriate or whatever it comes in at, I would just hope that we are going to continue to put forward the same amount in that pool if that is possible with this accommodation. Yeah, so I, again, we don't have firm estimates even what we've what we you know for the million dollars for for the solar on the um on the Fort River school uh, which is where it would go um and so I can't give you an assurance um I, but again what I'm saying is that the things that we I identified previously for our burst continues to be the three priority areas for a, for it Kathy yeah I'll just um in terms of the it's the parking lot at Fort River, but so everyone understands Fort River project already has more than enough solar in it for the Fort River school. So this solar would provide an offset to utility costs somewhere else. And when I did a quick look at kilowatt hours used in the Crocker Farm Elementary School, for example, it probably would come close to offsetting the electricity costs there. So the, the, the the million ish would be we haven't the designers haven't designed it yet but they'll be able to give us a more specific on how much kwhs we get and the concept was it would be on its own meter so it wouldn't be metered with the fort river school so the town then it would be on a town meter so we could do sort of what you've been doing paul with um the landfill solar you know that you've been allocating out who gets the the credits for that um and this the they, they would design it as long as they get the money by the end of this year so they had a timeline they can design it and it would be installed. It's the second phase because it's the north end of the parking lot. So this would clearly be spent by the end of, uh, you know, the end date because of the school schedule. So I just wanted to say that million, we don't have a, exactly how many kilowatt hours that buys right now, but we have for a million, we will get more. Um, yeah. So just any, to be, yeah, yeah, just to be clear, it, it's on the town. It's not, it's it's not the regional school district. It's right, a, exactly, it's, it's and that's separate, what I was trying to say. Gov this is it's a, a town. governmental entity, so it stays on the town town school side of things. And that's why I said it's 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 on its own meter, and it's a yeah. town meter um, mm -hmm. to decide where where that energy goes. I mean, should should any major benefactor want to give us more money? There's still room on the parking lot to add more, <laughs> so. This this won't fully cover the parking lot. So the the advantage is there's a new parking lot there. So you you know when you're installing it, you can plan for the canopies. I just wanted to make it clear that it's not the numbers a clear number, but it's not clear exactly what it buys yet, um, other than solar. Sorry. Okay. Are there any other comments? So maybe we can focus on the report now. Um, does any, as I said earlier, does anyone have any broad comments or specific comments on the report, uh, Councilor Haneke? So yeah, some of my changes that I had sent in on Saturday, I think didn't get incorporated into this, but I can resend them to you, Bob. Um, I'm concerned, and, and it's a minor concern about the executive summary in terms of just clarity on 
what we're what we're recommending when we say something like to six percent i think it needs a clause that says from what or the extra two percent not like it's two percent of the budget right so i i I've, I've done a couple of suggestions on sort of clarifying when we're talking about percentages what we're actually talking about um that's just minor um i had sent in a new paragraph under the overall budget that that talked about, and I think it made it a little bit into the executive summary, but a new paragraph that talked about sort of overall the staffing situation that the town departments are having, and that new paragraph didn't make it in. It can probably be rewritten better than I wrote it, <laughs> I will say, um, but but just just a little bit more emphasis on when we're talking about the whole budget, that the difficulties in staffing that are um are contributing to potentially higher turnover than typical but also um difficulty in hiring um because of the amount of work we're trying to get have people do um as as things do just just a just another mention of that beyond in the executive summary I'd like to see um I'll go back to capital in a second. Um, and then in the regional school section, again, another mention as to the reasons we are requesting an increase in the regional or recommending an increase in the regional school budget above financial guidelines. It's mentioned in like a sentence here or there in the executive summary, but the regional school section almost glosses over why we would be requesting or recommending that increase above financial guidelines. So I, I would like a set a section filled out more on the committee's reasons for making that recommendation. And maybe um, each of us probably has slightly different reasons. So maybe we actually have to voice them today to get it into the report. Um, but But I think the public should have uh, that, that there should be a focus on why we're making that recommendation contrary to our financial guidelines, frankly. Um, let me see. Um, a couple of minor things that that I, I will send you a marked up version of, of mine um, that are more just, just grammatical stuff or another, some stuff again for, for that clarity of, of discussion when we're talking about percentages or increases and things like that. In general, those were my my two big comments. Oh, capital. Um, I wanted to, when I wrote up the capital improvement plan, I added a paragraph regarding the Jones Library Project debt service that's in the capital improvement program, that 1.122 million, um, that indicated we hadn't heard um, from the town manager potential uses or plans for that or his thoughts on that. And so I I want to give him an opportunity um, to, to better fully answer some of our questions regarding the use of that money or what happens to it or, or how it could be used in the future, given that many of us believe even if the project goes forward, and I'm one that hopes it does, that that, that whole money probably won't be spent in this fiscal year. And and then I'd like the opportunity, if, if that happens, to rewrite that paragraph. Um, so I guess that's a request to the manager to expound a little bit more on the use of that money or any recommendations or anything like that. And then I can get a different sort of draft of that portion of it to you, Bob. Paul, did you want to respond? Sure, and Sandy can weigh in on this as well. So yeah, we talked about that. You know, I think um, what our feeling is is that those funds allocated to library repayments are going to be needed one way or the other for the library, um, either for repairs that have to be again uh, pretty much in this fiscal year, um, or whatever need is made. If it, I mean, if it isn't used for a bond repayment, then it is going to be if we assuming we don't move forward on this project, which is, is again not the assumption I'm working on. Um, it may not. Um, we will need it for some other purpose. So rather than adjust it now when we don't know the answer, 
we can come back in the fall and review when when free cash is certified and we can adjust all the all these some of these decisions at that point i think it's premature to make that judgment now sandy did you want to add anything to that i agree with what paul said um if we have a, a best guess now uh, I, I would leave the money in capital because I think it's a dangerous thing to tr take money away from capital uh, to go to operating and so forth. Uh, and so I would um, say, you once you know for sure what you're going to do with the library, and you'll know that in the fall, you can make adjustments. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke, let me apologize for not getting your comments fully incorporated. Um, it was just oversight and just... Drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> so it wasn't. I completely understand. So I'm not going to take the committee's time to go through them because many of them are very minor. Um, so. Okay. Kathy. Um, so, so, so Mandy, you're always such a close reader. Please do send them. Bob will share them with me because I'm finding some typos in sentences. Whenever I write sentences quickly, they have typos. But I think we said two to six. I did. Two to six percent, but two to anyway, send those in. So I have um, a question on the two questions on the capital improvement. So I think we just got the sentence we can add to what Mandy has already written. Um, can we? I think the answer is yes. So it says Jones Library debt service. If it ends up that we aren't fully going out. And that was estimated to be the full 12 months, assuming that we had financed the 15.8. If it doesn't end up being debt service, but it ends up being repairs, is that considered just repurposing that line? So, you know, Sonia used to say it's it's kind of in the same bucket. Um, so it's a, it's a question rather than, because um, I could see how, particularly because the trustees have a commitment to some repair money that we could combine it. So that's question number one. And I was, as Sandy knows, I was chair of JCPC. So I hesitated to raise any issues having written the JCPC report. But one of the things we did notice, and, and I'd like to add this sentence, but I wanna make sure it's it works well with people. And Sandy picked up on it right away. We have a very large expense item in this year's budget. It's the new radio system for police and fire. And it wasn't on the horizon a year ago. And so Sandy had to do a fair amount of work to find out it had been in the works. So my request, and I wanted to add a sentence that I think our capital plan, um, I was urging earlier on that it be balanced over the five-year period, but I feel like it'd be reasonably accurate for large projects over a two-year period. You know, that, you know, if we have something in the pipeline, it shouldn't bounce on when we didn't even know about it. So I'd, I'd like to just add a sentence toward that effect. So I'm not questioning the expenditure, but to, if you look at last year's JCPC report, this wasn't in the wings for FY25. And now we have some things in the wings that weren't on the wings at all, period, you know, weren't in the five-year plan. So I know how hard it was this year because of staffing issues to get people to do much more than one year worth. And I and Bob made a comment that anything more than one year is probably not super real, but things that are in the million dollar category, we ought to know there's some sleepers coming, just, just an add a sentence. So I just like to do add a sentence that to the extent we know that there's something brewing, we flag it in the plan when when it's brought to JCPC so that we don't get these big shifts. And I'll stop there because um, Sandy actually had pushed it off at one point to went out to find out really whether it was a fully formed plan because he noticed the same thing. It, it, it had not really been on the list initially. So it's it's a comment that I just want I'll draft a sentence and it will be more a recommendation for the future. Um, that's it. Thank you, Andy. Um, well, I'm going to first start by thanking Bob and uh, Kathy for providing this draft report. Uh, having been the one who's been in the role of having to sort of make sure that a report got written in prior years. Uh, I want to say that uh, 
They did a great job. It's a lot of work. I respect the amount of work that went into it. It's evident when reading it. And uh, there was a lot of creativity of looking at different approaches, which is the advantage of having the change in chair, is that somebody's looking at it from a different angle and get uh, the provided the continuity. And uh, as she always does, she's great about saying, Hey, somewhere we got to summarize it so that people don't have to read 15, 20 pages, but can get the pieces without having to read 15, 20 pages. And uh, she did her usual part. So I want to thank both of you. Uh, the second, but getting on to the um, uh, things we were talked about, I think that the question that was raised uh, about uh, the fact that staffing problems exist across all departments or many departments and that this is a very difficult environment for hiring and um, is actually pretty well stated in the report and i think that it was in the executive summary i believe so that it really is solidly there and i appreciate that it has been that it was suggested and included because if I was going to look for commonalities of things from all of the different departments that came to meet with us, uh, certainly uh, staffing concerns and uh, the need for hiring and the fear of losing people because of the need to fill the positions, the expense that we go through to train people, and then uh, lose them after training them. I mean, there are a whole lot of things that we heard from many department heads. Uh, the, it was not just the single piece, but there was a whole litany of the investment in the people that we then lose, losing the people, the cost and time of replacing them, the difficulty of replacing them. There is that whole sequence. And uh, so I think that you, there's no way that... Uh, it can be um, overstated because uh, it just was the one thing we heard across. And if anything, you know, we might want to take one last look to make sure that we have that whole piece in there. Another thing that cut across many departments uh, is something that was also in the capital budget and has already been discussed today. And that's the, important of the importance of the communications system that, that connects dispatch to all of the uh, all of the departments within public safety that rely on dispatch. And uh, so I think uh, that was sort of one other overarching piece. And the reason I bring it up is that while it was a capital item, um, it was one thing that we did actually ask uh, most of the public safety heads to at least comment on it a little bit. And all of them said something, and I think it's worth say, uh, putting in somewhere that we did uh, raise this with uh, the heads of public safety departments, and uh, every one of them who spoke to it uh, reinforced the importance of uh, this equipment and the need to uh, make sure that our communications capacity uh, within public safety and across departments is strong and that this is a necessary capital expense to get there. So I would make sure that we've adequately covered that. And I'm gonna, when I look at it one more time, I will look at it. Um, a, another uh, piece that, uh, are two pieces actually that I think tied together is I really appreciated the um, section on future years that uh, was included in the draft and uh, the the notation in the explanation of uh, as difficult as this year is that it's just a lead into where we're going. And I think that that was an extraordinarily important thing to say. If anything, um, I would tie this tie that back to the regional school discussion if we uh, because I think that uh, as we get into the regional school discussion, 
that is part of what we need to be thinking about is um, the fact that we've been pressed to do the 6% this year to save loss of teaching staff, but the, uh, we may have just been kicking the can down the road for one more year and uh, that uh, we have um, extreme concerns about this community being able to continue to support schools um, in the future at the level and the level of annual increase that they seem to have uh, built into their expectations. And uh, I would like to make sure that uh, uh, when we do write it up, we not just come up with our reasons, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, I gather, about why we were making the decision we we're making for this year, but to tie it back into um, the future years. And I guess my last comment is that uh, we just got the orders and uh, uh, I think it's, uh, we all need to take the time to make sure that we look at how the actual wording of the orders ties back to what we say about the orders in the, uh, in, in the report itself. And of course we have to be voting in a way that ties it all together anyway, but I, I don't think that's the issue. I just think that we may need to make sure. So I will give it a thorough, one last thorough read, get my comments off to Bob and Kathy as quickly as I can. And that's a summation of uh, my major comments. Thank you. Kathy? Yeah, I have a very minor one and I am, I, I agree that we should get to the the orders and anything substantive. Um, in the library um, write-up, there's a sentence that says uh, that the library climate goals would be achieved in the renovation. And then it goes on to say they'd anticipated $35,000 savings in FY25 because of those goals. That's not accurate. The $35,000 in FY25 is because they anticipated being closed. Um, that you know the new green building was never gonna be operating. So I just wanted to change it to, with the expected closure, the library anticip anticipated a 35,000. Their, their budget is gonna have to be rethought, Paul. I know they know that because it's, they're not close, you know, they may have more than enough money, but they anticipated some utility savings and they're going to be in the same building. So it's, it's, it's clear. I just, a simple wording because it wasn't a reduction because of climate of investing in better climate long-term we'll get that, but that wasn't why 25 is down. So that was a minor one. And I completely agree, and and I also saw one typo on the dollars, but I completely agree that we need to add a few sentences on why we why we went from four to six, added two percent, and we need to tie the wording in because Paul has given us some pretty complex wording. I must say, I looked quickly at the regional school operating budget and the um, assessment met. I mean, it's complex in that we ought to understand what's in those financial orders, because we then have to capture it in some way in text. Um, so that that's my only comment. I, I, I had two minutes to look at it before the meeting, but um, it jumped out at me that um, they're, they're written clearly, but there's a major message in the way they're written. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to look at them. So I think uh, Athena, when, when times comes, if you can post them on the so screen. My great. suggestion is, well, what my procedural suggestion is we might, well, Mandy wanted some words on why we're going from four to six, and I can add some words on that. But I think going through the school-related regional would be useful because we never discussed the assessment method. We just did a placeholder on it. Um, so it might be good to just focus on those. The, the others, financial orders are more straightforward. Um, and just so everyone knows the way Paul did it quite artfully, he pulled everything but regional out <laughs> into the rest so that we could focus on a, a specific a, extra regional wording on the two to six, the four to six. 
So that would be my suggestion. I Mandy's hand is up. Um, trying to focus on the orders, those two orders, the two related to the regional schools. Okay. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Yeah, a couple of thoughts. Um, so I'll go quickly so that it's out there. My reasons for recommending the increase um, are mainly the um, transitional nature for the last 15 months of the superintendency leadership, having an interim superintendent that then precluded um, essentially, who, who was also serving as finance director, <laughs> basically precluded doing what we had wanted them to do last year, last year. Um, is one of the big ones. And then and then the argument that a new superintendent shouldn't be shouldn't come in in as high of a crisis as they would have at four percent um, did in the end, you know, um, speak to me. Um, but I, I had two comments um, or two thoughts. The first one was maybe we can get the votes on all the financial orders except one, two and uh, actually one and two out of the way. Um, one and two are the assessment method and the regional school budget, and we can just get the rest of those votes out of the way to have be done with them um, on their recommendation. And then the second one was I'm, and this goes to the assessment method and even the the appropriation um, and approval order for the budget for the region. Does the committee want to vote to recommend the council send a letter or some sort of? Um, something to the regional school committee to accompany our votes on the budget that indicate potentially, and I, I'm speaking out loud here on some of my thoughts, that that increase that does not, that that six percent is not doable every year. <laughs> that 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 355 is not worked into our budget. Um, so it is not, it is one-time funds only and cannot be assumed to get another three and a half percent or whatever percentage on top of that next year. Um, and that, that we, we aren't sure again, we'd have to talk about something like this, but, but something about the, the non, um, standard nature of having the functional areas at different increases, um, percentage increases against our guidelines. Um, and, and those are just things I think might go in a letter, but do we want to recommend the council send an accompanying letter to the school committee with thoughts regarding assessment method, the increase they've asked for, even though they are getting it this year, clarity on where it's coming from and wh whether or not we believe it will be available next year at all um, to help them as they begin their discussions. Good question. <laughs> uh, Paul, did you want to weigh in? Yeah, so I just want to make sure in terms of the council's discussion that the orders are one thing and then your discussion in your report is something different. So when you talk about the orders, that's something that our finance staff have crafted. And I think we want to be very careful about, I, I don't think you want to put any editorial language into those orders. I think it's just the orders are factual actions by the council that will be reviewed by the Department of Revenue and by our auditor. Everybody looks at these things. So I think that you want to be very careful about fiddling with the orders. Um, I think our finance staff have done a pretty good job at trying to, uh, we, they, we struggled a lot with the language with the ARPA funds, quite honestly. And that was how to, how to finesse that because it's not an appropriation, but it is, we needed to show the full appropriation of the, of the, um, for the regional school district. So I think, they worked on that pretty carefully. So I just encourage you, if you're really gonna try to make changes to the orders that we have a pretty coherent discussion with our comptroller and our, our former comptroller and Sandy and everybody too. Thank you. Okay, Bernie. Yeah, I uh, I was just going to remark that it, it's not our intention to, at least not my intention to amend or alter yeah. any of the orders. The orders are the orders, um, I think it would be helpful to out for the regional school committee to understand that beyond the dry legal language of those orders, there's some concerns and thoughts. And uh, uh, you, you know, not to not to change the orders, but to 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 uh, uh, add some commentary that uh, to the school committee that will explain that uh, what what's going on here. And will reinforce the notion that uh, 
we're not comfortable, at least I personally am not comfortable with uh, prescribing an increase year after year after year. Okay. Um, so, so, Council Haneke? Can I start making motions? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can like move them. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to skip the regional ones for now. Um, and then I figure out through the other and, ones. And I just request that Athena puts them up on the screen. Yes. Yeah. I'm putting them up. There. I'm going to start with the four, four, oh, four A. Okay. Just so um, I think well, you should be looking at an 05. <laughs> I mean, a, an FY25. No, 2504A. I said I was going to skip the regional ones to start with. Oh, skip the regional. I thought, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, I thought you said so the start motions, with I'm the I'm going to start, start with the non-regional ones first. Yeah, so I was going to start with FY2504A. Yeah. Sorry about that. I misheard you. No, no problem. So the no, motion still... is Whoops. to recommend... To recommend that the council approve appropriation and transfer order FY25 04A, an order appropriating the town of Amherst operating budget for fiscal year 2025. Uh, Shane seconds. Any discussion? Okay, uh, Andy. Yeah, I, the one thing that I just wanted to say and uh, to follow up on what Paul said, when I mentioned um, orders, what I was referring to is that we need to look now that we had the orders at the language in the report to make sure that there's consistency in the report and the orders. But I was in no way suggesting that it uh, that the orders themselves should be um changed and I uh, uh, have uh, no no particular comments on the order on the table. I think it's one to support. Yeah, we'll re we, we will uh, I will get once we get through this, um, I will uh, may, I will change the, the 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 report to reflect the newer the newer set of our orders. Kathy? So not surprisingly, um, I cross-checked the numbers that are in this all order and they match what we saw in the budget book. So just in case anyone else wants to go back and do that, <laughs> you know, as I said, the first thing I needed to do is realize the schools or the, the elementary school is in it, but not the other, but it does match what we've been looking at. So that that's my only comment. And as, as you said, Bob, we can uh, say that this is in fact an order that it's the operating budget for everything but a few things. Um, so, yeah, in in the wording, we we won't change the wording of the order. No. Okay. Um, I think we're ready to vote. Then uh, I vote yay. Um, Kathy. Yes. Andy. Yes. Councilor Haneke. Aye. Uh, Councillor Walker? Yes. Bernie? Support. Okay. It's unanimous. It's for a. Uh, which one would you like me to bring up next? Capital improvement? Oh, um, yeah. So I think that one, let me find my numbers, is 05A. Yeah. Um, so I'll move that. To, to recommend that the council approve appropriation and transfer order FY25 05A, an order uh, appropriating funds for a portion of the Town of Amherst Capital Improvement Program equipment, buildings, and facilities for fiscal year 2025. No, second. Okay. And Steinberg seconds. Okay. Any discussion? Alicia, I can't, uh, Alicia, I can't, Councilor Walker and Bernie, I can't see your pictures very easily. So if you. No hands up right now, Bob. Okay. All right. Let's uh, go through then. Let's, uh, I vote uh, aye on this. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Andy? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. 
Bernie? I support. All right. That's another. Okay. Uh, next, next 06A. Okay. Um, move to recommend that the council approve appropriation and transfer order FY25 06A, an order approving and authorizing borrowing to fund capital projects dash bond authorization comma for the police facility chiller replacement and public safety radio system replacement. Any, second. any discussion? Fifty second. Andy, okay. Any discussion? Sorry. All right. Uh, let's uh, move to a vote. Uh, Councilor Walker. Yes. Andy. Yes. I'm a yes. Um, uh, Councilor Haneke. Aye. Kathy. Yes. Bernie? Support. Okay, another unanimous. So Athena, I have a question on 2503A, which okay. is the capital authorization for the regional school approval. It said no vote required. Does finance committee still recommend a vote? Yeah, so this is one where years ago, we had just, if the council doesn't take an action, then it's a pocket approval. Um, and we had adopted the practice in the last year or so of, of asking finance committee to make a recommendation and the council taking an affirmative action rather than just allowing it to be approved kind of in the in the background. So um, yes, I would ask that finance committee include that in their report. So I'll make a motion on that one then. You, you said you're starting with 03A? 03A. Okay. Um, move to recommend that the council approve Approval order FY25 03A, an order approving the Amherst Pelham Regional School District debt authorization for fiscal year 2025. Is there a second? A second. Okay, seconded by Andy. Any discussion? All right, uh, then let's move to a vote. Uh, I vote uh, yes. Um, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Andy? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Bernie? Support. Okay, it's unanimous. Twenty-five oh two. the budget before the assessment method. So I move to recommend that the council approve approval appropriation and transfer order FY25-02, an order approving the Amherst Pelham Regional School District FY 2025 uh, budget and appropriating the town of Amherst share of the budget assessment. Shane seconds. Any uh, discussion? Um, yeah, this, I should raise my hand, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, you know, this is the one where um, Mandy's suggestion of there be a side letter once this goes through the council. Um, the way this is wording, worded, it makes it clear that we're transferring in to the operating budget for schools, our share, uh, 355 from a one-time source. Um, so, if you just read this, you might not understand that. Um, and it's it it's it's clear that we and and the other thing is it it is in effect going from four to six percent. It did increase it. So um just we I'm not saying anything more. I'm going to vote for this, but I'm just we're gonna need to make it clear that's what this order does. Okay. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Um, I agree. I, I think after we finish this in the next order, there might be a motion to recommend the council write a letter to the school committee. Um, but yeah, it uses one-time funds. Um, I don't like using one-time funds. Um, I, I would 
in some sense prefer not to do this. I'm going to support it. Um, but I worry that it will give a false sense of less need to do what needs to be done over the course of the next year. Um, and I, I really do think we need to send a message or send a, 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 a clear sort of sending a message sounds so wrong, but, but let the regional school committee know that this is not, this is the, the these funds are not available next year um, and cannot be counted on to be available from this, the town next year. Um, that the town is starting at 18, 482, 898 next year, um, not the 18, 7, or 9, 8, 8, whatever it would be. Um, you know, and find a way to do that in a letter that, that puts it because the appropriation and transfer orders are just cut and dry, but but I do think we need to be clearer to the regional school um, what our concerns are for next year and what is what what is or is not a potential possibility regarding the use of the 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 plan for next year's budget FY twenty six budget based on these appropriation and transfer orders and approvals. But it's not this motion, so. <clears throat> Okay, Paul. Just just a note for Athena to change the date, the year on the council vote to 2024. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Andy. Yeah, I mean, this is we're getting a little bit into our reasoning, and I think that that's an important discussion to have. And um, you know, with you know, reluctantly, I come to, to this as being necessary. And I recognize that this has been a difficult year for the schools that um, because of the changeover in the superintendent with an uh, interim superintendent in between and the large changeover in the school committee, that this was a difficult year for them and that there are a lot of new school committee members who really uh, had not been through the process before and therefore uh, didn't have the background of how the process worked. I know that there were some people who feel that uh, it would have been helpful and it certainly would have been helpful had uh, the school committee focused on the effects of uh, uh, 4% increase earlier than they did. Uh, I think that they're all valid criticisms, but uh, it is what it is. And I think that it is in large part because of the amount of changeover in the schools. I think that to create a crisis in uh, the schools by so severely um, underfunding their expectations that they were that they apparently um, were really not prepared to implement would have been devastating for the schools and for that reason uh, it seemed appropriate but uh, I think it's important as we recognize all of that history that we also come back to the points that we've already talked about in this meeting about moving forward that uh, this is not something that is a sustainable level of year-to-year -year increase and um, that uh, whether it be a smaller increase in the next year or um, a uh, what the base would have been if it had been 4%, um, you come out the same way that um, looking at uh, the future funding for municipalities that it's just not sustainable to continue to operate schools in this fashion. And uh, I think that we also need to be supportive of efforts. And I know that Paul has been thinking about this, but supportive of efforts um, to communicate with other towns 
as to what their expectations and uh, capacities are going forward and that uh, we uh, make sure that we've tied in uh, to other communities because I don't think that we are alone um, in uh, recognizing the, the problems uh, continuing this into future years if there isn't some significant adjustment. And the last thing that I would put forward is that how the education program would have to be adjusted is not the purview of town meetings. It's not purview of the council in Amherst, but uh, the amount we can afford to appropriate is uh, very much of our responsibility um, for both the short and the long term to make sure that we are balancing out the capacities of our communities, uh, including the capacity of homeowners to pay taxes, to support budgets, since that's the largest source of income for all communities, and uh, that uh, we're, we're communicating that but not making suggestions on how um, this could be accommodated, that um, we, we realize it's a big challenge and uh, we, we um, look forward to supporting uh, the uh, school committee if it takes on, as it takes on this responsibility, something of that nature. Okay, thanks. Uh, Bernie? Yeah, I've got um, my rationale for doing this is the uh, other three towns went ahead and jumped it, uh, jumped into it and did a uh, fairly simplistic and uh, traditional kind of new England fix to this, which is we'll throw some more money at it. Um, and our if we didn't go along, I think this would be too too disruptive at this point. Um, in listening to the discussions, I'm uh, certain that not all of the members of the school committee, maybe a majority, uh, don't quite understand the seriousness of this. And they have proposed some, uh, have tossed out some, some very simplistic ways of, of solving the issue. Um, I, I think that will hopefully change over time. I think if we're going to continue to insist that the Commonwealth provide us more state aid, we have to stop bailing ourselves out. Because every time we go back to the state house and say, we need more education money for schools, they'll say, well, didn't you just increase the budget? Didn't you find the money? Um, I think we have to be careful of that. And I'm also concerned that the expectation level is being placed on a new superintendent who um, is coming in cold to a system unknown to her uh, is going to be put in a situation where she could very easily end up being forced into failure uh, by too much expertise, too, too many problems uh, that demand immediate solutions and too much expectation, expectations upon her skill level. Uh, I don't see that she has a great, she has some good staff people that she can rely on. But I, I'm really concerned that uh, when we keep saying, oh, well, you know, <laughs> superintendent will fix all this. No, she won't. Um, and we should acknowledge that. So I think we're going to find ourselves next year going back and forth again as to whether or not we're going to bump up uh, the school budget a little bit or a lot or finally forcing a uh, revision in how services are delivered. It's not going to be an easy year for the schools. And it won't be an easy year for anybody who has to make decisions about this. Thank you. Yeah, I, I I just want to comment that I mean I I I share everyone's concerns about having to go this way on the budget, but I agree that um, we're 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 looking at a situation where um, the the alternative is just not not tenable. Um, and um, you know I, I had a conversation with Andy a few weeks ago and. We talked about, you know, we have reserves for rainy days, right? Well, it's raining <laughs> um, and uh, we have to do something. And so this is 
this is what we can do. I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Councilor Haneke's suggestion that the council write a letter explaining that we can't do this every year. Um, and I mean, we may want to note in that letter that in the four towns meeting, the regional committee, school committee stated that they understood this was a problem and give us a year to give them a year to work on it. So um, they kind of committed to working the problem. Um, whether they can or not is another story, but they did. So I think we should hold them to, to that, that um, promise, of, not promise, but hold them to that aspiration. Anyway, um, that's, that's it. Andy? Yeah, I did just, uh, I remember the conversation we had about rainy day funds. I don't think it's raining. Uh, this was not unexpected. And uh, I look back in my history with the town and I can tell you 2007 and 2008, it was raining. <laughs> um, and I know the difference. And the difference is that uh, we had an operating budget for the year 2007 and we kept getting notifications that the governor had uh, cut funding from the appropriation for the year we were in because of the plummeting revenue in the state budget. And we had to make cuts in the year we were in as well as in the year ahead in 2008. So having lived through that on the finance committee, I would define that as raining. Uh, and uh, I think that it's important that we uh, remind people that uh, when we talk about holding reserves, that um, that first core uh, tier of reserves is for a pure crisis, that uh, this is not a pure crisis because this was known, anticipated. We had talked with Superintendent Morris about it at the time. He was committed to working on it, but then other things overtook um, his time, his life, and then he left. And uh, so uh, it wasn't unanticipated. Uh, I think that uh, raining is when it's unanticipated. Okay, fair enough. Any other discussion? Okay, then I'll move to a vote. Um, so we have a motion. Uh, I, I, I vote uh, yes. Uh, Bernie? Uh, support. Andy? Yes. Um, Kathy? Yes. Councilor Haneke? Aye. Councilor Walker? Yes. Okay, I think it's unanimous again. So uh, uh, I'll make the next one. Um, I want to say, I, I want to thank, before I make this one, I want to thank Paul for working with the finance committee on the one we just recommended, uh, such that we didn't need to use chapter 44, section 32. Um, so I, I, I want to acknowledge that he could have not worked with us. And I thank him for working with us um, to modify that order that we probably could not have done on our own. Um, so the next motion is to recommend that the council approve approval order FY2501, an order approving the Amherst Pelham Regional School District assessment method for fiscal year 2025. I'll second, but I also have a question. Go ahead, Kathy. And this is this is wording, Paul, and I'm not trying to change the wording. Mandy quickly put for FY25 in what she read, but that's not exactly the way it reads. And once and what you can see 
is we are only approving it for FY25, you know, underneath it. So, um, so Mandy, you put, you know, as assessment method for FY, but it, it actually says for fiscal year 2025 only. Um, so I, I'm just, it's clear to me what this says, but is, is, is it clear to everyone else when they read it? Mandy, you just stuck some words in because it did like kind of. It, it's it kind didn't of really say it in the title, and I felt like it, it didn't say it in the title exactly. So it was put it like, in there despite the title. Yeah, so she net she kind of plunked it in because it needed to be in that. It's this bold. It's the bold line sentence I'm looking at the not the text underneath it. Yeah, so it, that's it's a question of you, Paul and Sandy. I mean, if do we need to say? assessment method for FY25 in the beginning, the top line. Um, I think that is, you don't need to say it because that's what this whole thing is. You, you always are just. Okay. Um, and I, I agree, if you wanna comment on, this is a one-time thing or whatever, that can be part of your narrative report, but it's not part of your. Um, okay. So um, I, I, what, what I see it reading, it says for fiscal year 25 only, um, I mean, I think you can just say for fiscal year 25 or, I don't know how they've read in the past, but the only is, um, it doesn't really mean anything. And I, I just noticed those quotation marks at the beginning of for fiscal, but then the, it never closes it. So um, it's maybe... down here. It's yeah. way down there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So be, be, this is how it's been worded in the past. It's always for fiscal year such and such only okay. because okay. it's an amendment to the regional agreement. And that's why it's quoted in because it's amending the regional agreement. It's not just approving the assessment method. Okay, it shows you that I haven't read it carefully in the past. So I'm thank sorry, you. I, did, I didn't mean to stop sharing. I meant to no, no thank you. Sorry. Thank you. That answers all of my questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councilman Haneke? Yeah, my comments go more towards um, a potential communication with the Regional School Committee um, than this appropriation and approval order particularly, but I've always had issue with the guardrails to begin with. Um, but 6% is not something that is sustainable long-term at all. Um, there was concerns that the 4% wasn't sustainable to begin with when they were instituted, but I think we need to communicate in this potential letter that may get recommended in a potential next motion, um, um, that that at a minimum, the guardrail percentage is not sustainable for our town. Um, I was concerned this year that other towns indicated that, oh, if they hit the guardrail, why isn't Amherst giving to the guardrail too? That didn't appear to me to have regional school committee members really understanding what an assessment method is um, of there's calculations and formulas and those formulas are actually determining a new every year different contributions amounts based on the total assessment to the four towns and that these guardrails are saying those new calculations should not increase any one town's contribution more than X over the prior year's contribution, but it did not seem to me that all school committee members really understood what was going on behind all of this. Um, but I think we need to communicate to the school committee that it's not sustainable. Andy? Yeah, I mean, this is always a difficult issue because having lived through many years of the uh, assessment method, uh, it, it's such a complicated statutory um, piece that, um, and there's such a history of how our four communities have worked together 
to come up each year with an acceptable solution and the um, resolution that we finally reached, which includes the guardrails for um, a specific reason, uh, that uh, we're delving into a history that I can guarantee that most members of this new school committee who have never lived the experience don't know as well as many of the rest of us don't know. Um, if we didn't approve this, um, or if other towns, towns didn't approve this, and uh, then one of two things is gonna happen. And we don't, uh, I think that neither one of this is desirable for um, Amherst. And I don't think it's desirable for the region because either it causes the budget to fail, which is the opinion that we have received from uh, the interim superintendent, Dr. Slaughter has uh, said that it's his understanding that if we fail to achieve the, the uh, an assessment method that's proposed by the school committee, that the entire budget fails. And of course, we just did something to avoid that. Um, but I've never been quite understanding of why uh, Dr. Slaughter says that, uh, because uh, when you read the statute, what the statute says is that if um, all communities don't agree on an alternative method, that then the statutory method that is built into Mass General Law as the default methodology is the method used. And uh, I think that the default methodology creates a lot greater risks for the community and uh, was, would probably be much worse for us in Amherst than uh, the use of the five-year averaging uh, that is built into the, what is currently the agreement and uh, the uh, guardrail was put in there as an extra protection for towns that would have a particularly difficult um, um, increase year for year. And um, when you when we said we need a 6% increase for this year, we almost had to go to the 6% guardrail increase in order to make it work. It wouldn't have worked if we had just stayed with what was in prior place. So, uh, I, uh, you know, we could go on for many more hours than it's worth about the history of the assessment method and how it's evolved over time and why it is where it is. But I think that for the reasons that I've stated, we uh, really have no choice. Any other discussion? Okay, uh, we have a motion that's seconded. Uh, let's vote. Um, I vote uh, aye. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Andy? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Bernie? Support. Okay, it passes unanimously. All right. Um, Councilor Haneke. So I want to make one more motion, but, um, and then I'll explain sort of some thinking behind it and that it might not be the end of it. But I want to make a motion to recommend that the council send a letter to the regional school committee regarding the FY25 budget and the FY. 26 budget process. I'm going to stop there as the motion. Is there a second? I second depending on the content. So <laughs> so I you know I I am trying to make it and, and this is where I want to explain it. I'm making it general so that it that motion would make it into this report. Um, yeah. knowing that we don't have a letter yet, 
Um, I believe the budget is set to be voted on the 17th of June, maybe the 24th. Um, we have a couple of finance committee meetings between now and then, but we have to get this report out. So I'm curious whether the committee would, would sort of support such a motion to get it into this report with then something that says, we'll draft a letter to present to the council by the time June 24 rolls around. And I'm happy to try and draft that letter, but I don't want to get into, given the time we have now, I've taken notes on what people have said they thought might need to go into a letter. I'm happy to draft it for future review of the finance committee to sort of expand on this motion um, with an actual recommended letter maybe. Um, but I don't want to take the time in today's meeting, given what else we have to cover, to go through and truly decide what all needs to go in it. So I thought this might be the best compromise as to getting something into the report while still leaving the, 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 the options of working on this later. Athena, did you have a comment? Oh, I'm sorry. It, there, there was an instance before where the finance committee recommended a letter, and then nobody brought forward a letter. And Mandy's already spoken to that, so we're, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I, I agree. I agree with Mandy. I think that we can we can agree to to recommend that the council write a letter or send a letter, and we can then draft it um, if the council agrees to send it. So, Kathy. I, I I totally agree, and I just drafted a really sloppy sentence that the Finance Committee discussed the importance of the Council sending a letter to the Regional School Committee highlighting issues of concern. We endorse the concept and plan to bring this to the Council at a later date. You know, so just, you know, that. so so I just plunked some track edits into the Regional School section. <laughs> while we're sitting here, but I, I, I do agree, you know, and we've been focusing on the regional school because the elementary school came in at 4%, but they only did it because they had ESSER. So they similarly, not because they needed more this year, but next year, unless something changes, they won't be able to adhere to guidelines. Um, so I just, I'm I'm not trying to distort the letter. The letter needs to focus on regional. We've done a one-time uh, transition money, um, but but elementary schools are not out of the woods either. Andy, yeah, on uh, what Kathy just said, I just wanted to point out that Esser was a known issue a year ago when we talked to. Dr. Morrison had the idea that something had to be done. It might, it would be worth mentioning Esther um, in the known um, uh, sunset of Esther funding and the uh, choices that were made um, on how to use Esther funds and the consequence of those choices are things that we could include in the letter because I think it's very much of our recognition of the problem. Um, my other suggestion is, and I originally raised my hand, is that I would uh, suggest we uh, not just recommend in the report that the council send a letter, but we make it clear that it is the intention of the finance committee to provide such a letter for council consideration. So um, I think that... Be I think I think those are the words that I just wrote. So you we, you can read them. But I, I absolutely, you know, yeah. it's not like someone should write it. We'll we'll draft a letter and bring it. Yeah. So I I see Alicia's hand is up. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Walker. Um. Thank you. So I I'm okay with um sending a letter to the regional school committee. I would just hope, and you know, I know all of us who are on this committee right now have sort of shared our feelings about this being a one-time thing and not wanting to set a precedent for the future. But I also do want to recognize that there may be a different finance committee next year. Um, 
or next term and that they might make a different decision. So I also don't want this to be a letter that makes it seem like this is a binding decision, but that this is the conversation that we had as a finance committee right now. And for this decision, this was our thinking. So I hope that we can just be clear with the language on that also. Yeah, that's a good point. So do we need to vote on Mandy's motion? Yes, we do. Um, so is there any other discussion? Okay, uh, I vote aye. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Mandy, or Councilor Haneke? Aye. Andy? Yes. Alicia, or Councilor Walker? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Thanks, uh, unanimous. Uh, sorry, I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine why, Bob. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been a, kind of a, a short night. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we do need to uh, also have a. I'll, I'll move that we accept the uh, finance committee report, assuming that all the changes that people want to make will be incorporated, um, and uh, that we send it to the committee or to the council on June 6th, no later than June 6th. So and, I'll move. And Bob, do you want to give everyone a deadline for whatever edits they want to send in? Yeah, if you can get them to me by, you know, late afternoon tomorrow, I should be able to incorporate everything in time to get it in by the 6th. So I, I second that motion. You second it. Any discussion? Okay, let's vote. Uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. Andy? Yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Support. And I'm a yes. So we have a unanimous acceptance. Well, thank you all. It's been quite a, a month, <laughs> um, but I think we've done a good job of uh, going through the budget, and I think we have a good report, and obviously it can be um, improved with the edits that, that people need to want to make, um, but I think it's a, it's a good report. Um, so let's try to get through some of the other stuff. Um, I, you know, I saw Guilford and Amy have been very patiently uh, waiting for this. Um, why don't we try to knock off the water and sewer rates? So Guilford and Amy, do you wanna have any comments you wanna make to start? Um, can I quickly ask if there are any questions about the optional tax exemptions? I can ask yeah. our assessor to come in. Um, we didn't ask her to attend this meeting, but if anybody has questions about the assessment method, I can bring her in. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, I, don't, I don't have any questions and I'm okay. a yes. I'm a yes on it, not that we're voting. <laughs> yeah, okay. this is, this, just okay. so everyone knows, uh, this is something that we do routinely every year. And uh, it's basically people who are deserving of, of a of a personal uh, exemptions of from their taxes, and we want to make their lives a little bit better than they are. So, sorry, I didn't I didn't want to jump the line. I just wanted to be able no, to give her okay. a heads up if if we wanted her to come in. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Guilford or Amy, do you want to talk about the sewer rates, water and sewer rates? No, you, you can go, Amy. You <laughs> like it so much. No. <laughs> Do you have the memo for the sewer rates and the water rates? Um, yes. We're going up to 525 in water and 585 in sewer. Um, that's based on what we have going on now. You've been getting a lot of emails from certain employees saying they, they and there are issues at the wastewater plant, and we do know there are issues at the wastewater plant. So at some point, the sewer rate will need to go up as we start identifying the projects we want to move forward with. Uh, it's the same as what we did last year with uh, projects for the Centennial Water Treatment Plant. So there is going to be some changes in the sewer rate probably in the years, in the future years. So if you have any questions, let me know. 
Um, uh, Councilor Haneke? Yeah, um, a, a couple of questions. Sorry that they're going to jump between water and sewer a couple of times, but some of them apply to both. Um, the memo on the last page has some projected sewer rates. Um, are you saying that those rates might be too low right now, given some of the needs of the town? Uh, 605 in FY26, 610 in FY27, and 620 in FY28. Um, and can you talk about whether those projections, including the water projections beyond um, Centennial, or, or not, not Centennial, beyond the sewer plant, um, are sufficient to maintain and improve our systems, particularly the pipes underground that you discussed last week that you're starting to see failures on. Um, are these projections too low to accomplish the needed repairs to the failure of the pipes underground or, or the, the, the age of the pipes underground that we're starting to see failures to? That's like that's a great question. I guess you've been watching the news and following Atlanta, haven't you? <laughs> um, it's kind of interesting. We have some pipes in our in our system which are relatively old. They're old. There's as old as the pipes in Atlanta, and they're actually in very good shape. We have some pipes in our system which are relatively new. They're less than fifty years old, and they are in horrendous shape. Um, it's it's kind of a an interesting thing with pipes and the different materials in the ground. The ground we have is very acidic, and a lot of the metal pipe is being corroded at an unusual rate. Um, we had one one water main was actually it had little uh, arcs of electricity were shooting down it and making little pin pinpoint holes in it. It was on West uh, Pomeroy Road. Um, it's just a stray current shooting through the ground and it made holes in the pipe and the pipe was, except where the current hit, the pipe was in very good shape. So it's, it's, it is hard to tell. In the sewer system, we do have a camera and we do, are, do have the ability to camera it and look at it. Um, the rates we projected for sewer was meant more to be, and more to address the sewer pipe problems. We have really not sat down and Sorry to address what we're going to do at the wastewater plant. Um, we were waiting for our permit to come in. We have our permit. We have an idea of where the regulatory world is going to go with our permit in the future. So we have a better idea of how we want to address those issues at the plant. So the answer is yes and no on the sewer side. We did address for the pipe a little bit, and but we didn't address as much as we probably should have for the um, plant because we really didn't. We haven't started to work on that. On the water side, we believe we have addressed the pipe issue. Um, but like I said, there's really kind of things do happen. Uh, unusual things happen in the ground. Um, so, but we think we have a good handle to start with. Kathy? I, I think Mandy's question sort of got at everything I was going to ask. But um, I just want to repeat it back. The issue, there were several years ago where suddenly there was a big change and we didn't know it was coming um, because of uh, work that needed to be done. Centennial was one of it. And the, so this time around, um, or I think you're saying we, between reserves and the rates we're charging on water, you have more confidence in the rate projection increases for water and you're less confident on the sewer side or sewer wastewater? Is that a way of summarizing what you just said? Confidence, no. We know that there's, we didn't, we didn't project in certain needs for the wastewater on the plant side because we don't have them defined yet. Yeah, no, I tried to word it as less confident, not that that you're going to bet money on either of them, but, you know, just because when we put them out, people do look not just at this year's increase, but the, the following years, they look they look at what's going to happen to them all the way out um, to their race. So I saw Amy was sort of saying, yes, yeah. a little bit more confident here and a little less or a lot less there. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a fair statement. I think basically another way to say what Guilford was saying was just when it comes to the sewer projections, because we haven't, now we've got the permit, now we have to do the facility study to figure out what the 
bigger projects might be at the treatment facility. Um, so we just don't have 100% confidence in what some of those outlying costs might be. But we think we've got a good handle on the, the collection system on the sewer side. On the water side, um, we feel a, a lot more confidence about it. It's a good word. Thank you. I had one question. Um, the um, reduced consumption you in the memo from the, the town manager says that water consumption has been decreasing approximately 2% per year over the past several years. And that's creating a fiscal pressure on the fixed costs aspects of the, of the uh, system. Um, I remember two, three years ago, there was Kathy and, and Bernie were working on a, a thought of, you know, creating a, a per meter charge to kind of smooth out some of the issues with fixed costs. Uh, is anything happening with that? Is that, you know. And it was, it was per meter where the big meter, so the big apartment right. buildings, the big whatever. You have a big meter and a small meter, right. <laughs> That has not moved forward, but what has moved forward is because since we changed the water regulations, we now own the water meters, and when we want to replace a water meter, we replace it. Um, we do have to make our large users upgrade some of their infrastructure to take the new meters, but there, it's it's a much easier way to do it. We just re upgraded the meter two meters. One meter at UMass, two meters at UMass. One, one at UMass, one at Amherst College. Yes, we have another meter we're going to upgrade at UMass. So these are our bigger users, and these are actually the meters that slow down the most. So we want to finish this meter upgrade at UMass. I think we have two left, and we have one in an apartment complex that's a big user. And then we should actually, we might actually see our consumption going up because we have more accurate meters and the bigger users. It used to be we it used to be it was the owner's responsibility to replace the meters and they could do it when kind of when they wanted to and they could drag their feet, but now we have the ability to push harder on it. Okay. Thanks. Uh Councillor Haneke. Uh just a follow up to that or at least a, a related question to that. The the we're, the memo says that the work to explore other ways to build users was put on hold um, due to departure of the finance director. Um, do now that we've officially have a new finance director, um, when when do you see that work sort of coming off of hold? Are, are we looking at next year's rates? Are we looking at you know two years from now's rates, three years from now's rates, where that might be able to happen? When 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 do we think that that, that work um, for exploring, I know we had a presentation a couple of years ago about what the options were, but there needed to be a lot of work done with that. What's our timeline on that now that we have a finance director? Um, our finance director doesn't start for another, until <laughs> next month. So I don't know if I wanna give the finance, new finance director her, her orders yet. But I assume we'll start I assume it'll be put on the finance director's list of things to do, and then we'll work through it. Bernie? Uh, believe it or not, there are companies that actually specialize in uh, helping develop sewer rates, water rates. Um, I don't know what they cost, but that's always, you know, that, that bringing somebody in is always an option. Um, I have a great deal of sympathy for Guilford and Amy wrestling with these things. I mean, one of the paradoxes is, is that uh, wastewater treatment plants become more efficient and cheaper to use on a per unit basis when flows increase. But on the other hand, you want to decrease the water use because of conservation and changes in technology and everything else. So it's, it's an unbalanced system. Um, and uh, I, you, I believe we were working on an I and I program or the town was working on an INI program and they just want to ask where is that and can we expect in the future to have uh, some infiltration and inflow inspections done? So we've always done inspections and we've always looked at that and the small stuff we've addressed. Um, we have out to bid right now and I think it opens tomorrow. 
a, a contract so we can bring in a contractor who actually can slip line when we find INI. And um, we've set some money aside for that. And hopefully we'll be starting some slip lining here in the near, probably before the year's out, hopefully. Okay. Slip. I, I know from, I, again, from experience that kind of, pro that process works, but um, being able to identify it and uh, the areas where you need to uh, um, do the work is uh, is, is the, the real trick. Yeah. So again, um, I, I'm appreciative of this. I'm also appreciative of the fact that our wastewater treatment plant is very old. Um, and hopefully uh, as, as you begin to uh, look at what needs to happen, we'll get newer technologies, and, uh, better ways of keeping the bugs happy and uh, things will work, work well. So thanks. Yep. Councilor Haneke. I apologize. One more. Hopefully it will be the end. <laughs> but Bernie's question triggered uh, another another past conversation in my mind, which is um, reuse, uh, water reuse from treated water and all. You had been exploring, I think, some of that with UMass at some point for irrigation maybe or something. Um, I, I think you said it was on hold because it might have been too expensive um, or or something, but is is as we upgrade or you know repair our treatment plant, does that reuse potential come back into play, um, and for more than just UMass, or can you just talk about reuse again? So we the the reuse system is designed. Um, we chose not to install it with the GBT because UMass has now decided to go a different route. Supposedly they they'll be shutting down their central heating plant at some point because they're going to use geothermal and a couple other things to create heat um, and move away from fossil fuels. So as they move away from fossil fuels, there won't be the need for as much reuse water. And then they would be since they would be their primary customer, uh, we just real we decided it wasn't wasn't cost effective to do this project right now. Maybe another five, 10, 20 years it would be, um, but right now it's not. Um, the athletic departments really aren't on board with spraying their fields with reused water right now. Um, so, I mean, we don't have we don't have PFAS in our reuse water, but they have PFAS in their turf. So I don't really see what the problem is, but they don't want it anyhow. Um, that's just a joke, sorry. Um, <laughs> But that's where we are. It's on hold because we lost our, our big customer. And if the big customer had wanted it, we would have done it. Okay, so um, do I have a motion to uh, accept the, or to recommend that the council accepts the new water rates, increased water rates? We have a specific wording of this. Um, I'll make the motion. Sure. I guess it's to recommend the council approve approval order FY 25-10 and order setting the setting of the water and sewer rates to be effective July 1, 2024. Shane seconds. Any discussion? Okay, I vote uh, yes. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Uh, Councilor Walker? Um, I'm voting yes, but also just a heads up that I do have to leave after this vote. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Andy? Yes. Uh, who have I left? Uh, Councillor Haneke? Aye. And Bernie? Support. Did I get everybody? <laughs> I think so. Okay. And then uh, I thought 25. I'm conscious that it's just after four, but could we, if there's no discussion on the optional assessment, yeah. can we just do that order as well? I was going to try to do that order. Um, so uh, it's the recommendation of council order FY 25-11, acceptance of optional tax exemptions. Um, looking at this, um, you know, it's, it's in the same range that we've seen in the past in terms of the, the, looking at the, the memo in terms of the overall cost. 
And as I mentioned earlier, it's really for um, individuals who, uh, you know, we can help out uh, that and help make their life a little bit uh, more livable. So uh, is there any discussion on this? Or well, actually, actually, we need a motion. So also I'll move to approve order FY25-11, an order approving the acceptance of optional tax exemptions for FY2025. My only change was if I to recommend to recommend that the council approve. Sorry. Yep. Right. I mean I approve it too, Bob, but okay. so you I'll second? second it formally. Okay, second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Uh, Andy. Move for, to vote, Andy. Yes. Uh Ami, yes. Uh ha Councilor Haneke. Aye. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Support. Uh, I think Alicia has left us. Yes, she has. So say one absent. Yep. Right, one absent. Okay. Um. Would you like to move forward with the gauge property? Um, I don't know. Is this um do does do folks need to discuss the gauge property um, purchase in detail? Do, do you want to push that to uh, our next meeting? We or do the, need a council vote on this order before the end of the month. Um, and we have planned tentatively to have the public forum on the 17th. I think Athena just said we should slug through it. <laughs> Okay. It's up to you. We can we can move it. I mean, I I I would guess that the committee would not like to schedule an extra meeting, <laughs> and and maybe try well, and get through this. But if there I, are questions or something, I don't know that this will be a difficult discussion. And Gilford is here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have Gilford here. All right. So I mean, I'll I'll um I'll put a motion together that uh, we recommend that the. Council approve. Um, is there an order here? I don't know if there's an order. Yeah. Um, it's Water Fund Appropriation and Transfer Order FY24 05E. Okay. An okay. order appropriating funds for the Town of Amherst Water Fund Capital Program purchase of watershed land for water supply protection. <laughs> <laughs> Mouthful. <laughs> okay. So I, I've made that motion. James I'll second it. <laughs> okay, okay. Mandy, Mandy's got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's a motion. Any uh, discussion? So I, I, I just want to make one comment, if possible. Um, it was I, I. I don't know whether it was you, Guilford, or Dave Zomek, when I asked about the need for this, that talked about sort of a legal obligation to protect water sources. That I wasn't at the council meeting when I asked about this, um, that I wasn't really fully aware of that, that was good to know, I would say, um, given how much land we've been buying, that it's not necessarily just a local desire to do so, which is always good, but also more of a legal requirement to do so. Did, did I kind of summarize that correctly? Yes. The, the State Department of Environmental Protection re requires us to protect our zone A's in the watersheds, and this is what um, this is what we're doing. This this par parcel has a piece of zone A going through it. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, let's vote on it then. Uh, I'm an I'm a yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Aye. Uh, Andy? Yes. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Support. Okay. So, and Alicia is absent. All right. Um, so, you want to take up track and fields? We're on a roll, so maybe what else can we get? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we'll, I do don't on, we'll do that on. We'll do that on the 11th. Thank you. I, I do want to. Thank you, Guilford. Yeah, thank you, Guilford. Thank you, both of you. Yeah.
Um, I wanted to ask um, Paul just a question on um, it's in the the uh, Matt who drafted the section on uh, yeah um, it's 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 a health it's a community under uh, public health. Um, the administrative assistant is fund, funded out of a general extra helpline item, and we wondered what that was, if you can explain what that is. So some departments have an extra helpline, which is for um, temporary um, support or um, periodic um, ser services that they hire is in terms of, um, you know, uh, in terms of their budget. So it's it's not a permanent position. Not a permanent sense. position. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. I just needed to, an explanation for the report. Yep. The town clerk has a similar line for seasonal help that they use around elections. That makes sense. All right. I think uh, we've done accomplish a lot today. Um, a little bit over, but uh, I think we uh, have re reduced the need for an extra meeting um so i will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn i make a motion but i have one quick question bob before we do that um so everyone wanted to add some words to regional the section of regional explain why we're doing what we're doing um what i i drafted some and what i thought is i would just send that section around to people so they don't have to plow through the hole or would they rather just I send it to Bob and Bob incorporates it in and you read through the whole thing. So it's a, it's just a question of what might be more efficient for people. I, I think I think it's probably best that you send it to me. I don't want to get a, get in violation of the open mm -hmm. meeting yep. law. Okay, good. I, I, would I, would just, I will just I will just send that in track changes just to that section and I'll leave it to you to get all those uh, orders in the right wording that we just I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll work with the well i've got the orders now so i can i can do that and my preference and this is just a drafting preference since all of them were unanimous i'd rather than voted for voted against vote or whatever i'd rather say unanimous with one absent or yeah, something that's what i'll, that's what I'll say okay, yeah, right. okay thanks then i i second the motion to adjourn <laughs> andy I have a question that uh, before we vote on adjourning, and that is, what is the plan for track and field discussion? That, so it's uh, we're gonna we're gonna have another meeting next a week from today. Um, and uh, Athena, you said that the the folks who are the um, what are they? The engineers who have uh, been working on the 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 design will come in and brief us on it. That's right. So they can answer questions about the three different options. Um, by that meeting, the Community Preservation Act Committee will have made a recommendation on the request to change the language in there in the CPA funding that the council approved. Um, and we've also drafted an order for the committee to consider for that third piece of funding. So we should have the project designers and Dave Zomek and Doug Slaughter here for that conversation. If there are questions that the committee members have uh, in advance of that meeting, it's it's always helpful to have those questions ahead of time so we know what staff need to um, focus on when they're making their comments and, during the meeting. So I have a procedural question. Um, thanks for raising this, Andy. Um, I know one of Mandy's concerns when we talked about this at the council is that the um, that that if I just think of option two right now rather than three, that the other towns never put in their CPA money. And one possibility that I was going to suggest when we talk about it is the idea that if lighting was held out, they could later fund it with CPA. Should I let someone know that I'm going to raise that issue? <laughs> you know, so it's it's uh so that we can have, you know, I'm doing a looking at the SLR budget for this because it it in option two it almost exactly matched what they originally took to their CPA committees 
that was then turned down because it was turf. You know, so it's 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 just it's a question on whether I should send that through. And and I'm telling you all now in an open meeting that that I'm going to just raise that as a question. Uh, yeah. Kathy, if you could put that question in writing so that I can get it to sure. the right people. I'm not sure that I captured your entire question. Sure. So I, I want to make sure that I'm I'm no. I will. I'm asking the right people the right question for you. If if okay. the CPA money from the other three communities is necessary for the project and doesn't exist, then it can't go out to bid because the full appropriation doesn't exist. Right, but Bernie, but uh, okay, let me just, my, my thing, there is enough money if we do everything but the lights. Right, no, I, under, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is that uh, they're gonna have to take something out anyway if the CPA money from the other two, you know, the other three communities aren't there. Well, and the, other, but the option, money- Option yeah. two, they, we don't need more money. It happens to match, you know? So anyway, okay. we can have the longer, it's an option two. There's enough money without them doing it, but then we put in CPA and two of them haven't. So it's it's mm -hmm. a way of more evenly sharing it. But but yes, I totally understand. They're gonna go out to bid. And the question is, you know, could you, in our elementary school, we thought we could, if we needed to cut one thing out and just buy it later. Um, like. Sure. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's that, that, that that's fine. But I just want to make the point that if yeah. the funding's not there, they can't go out to bid. Yep. So I I'll I'll word it in a way that someone will be able hopefully be able to understand it. We'll send it. Thank you. I'm ready. Thanks. To any any other questions? Please send them send them over to me so I can share those with the right people. Thank okay. you. Okay. So uh, let's vote on a German. I'm. Yes, I'm a yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Bernie? I support. Kathy? Yes. And Andy? Yes. All right. Thank you, folks. And we'll convene again uh, a week from today. So, Paul, a big Thank thanks to all your staff who's scrambling yeah, behind you. the scenes getting these things together. Thank, Thank you very much. Good night. Good right. afternoon. Take care. Good afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.